And welcome back. This is uh, Wisconsin Shoe Guy. And today we're going to have a shoe battle all about Adelaide's. Stay tuned. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. This is Wisconsin Shoe Guy. And our channel, we talk about men's dress wear. Um, it's all about footwear. And we talk about unboxing videos, um, general shoe knowledge, helping you understand the industry and what's happening with your shoes. Uh, we look at shoes critically to determine whether or not they're worth the price that they charge. Uh, we compare shoe to shoe to understand which one is the best of the same category. And then I interview experts in the field to get their take as well. Check out my playlists to see all my videos. Hey everybody and welcome back. For those of you who've been watching the channel for a while, um, and I started this in, in January, um, I used to do um, these shoe battles where I actually brought all of the shoes from a region out and, and talked about all of them in turn, right? So a very different um, kind of format that I've been doing, just kind of looking at two at one time. Um, it doesn't really lend itself to the quantitative analysis on the shoes where I'm measuring it and kind of talking about the measurements and stuff. But, but I think it, it is valuable, especially as you look at, um, you know, the shoes in, in, in total. So I decided to do that again today. Um, and I decided to look at it in Adelaide's. Most of my shoe battles have been Adelaide's, but I'm going to record one for split toes as well today, um, just to kind of put out uh, both, uh, see what uh, what you guys want. If you're actually interested in more shoe battles having to do with split toes than Adelaide's, um, at this point, I may um, actually alter and, and move over there. Um, there's been a lot of people asking for a shoe battle having to do with uh, my English Adelaide specifically. And so I'm going to include all of those here, and hopefully that'll give you the uh, the info that you're looking for. I've had several new additions since I've done a, a large uh, look at this. Um, so today we're actually going to compare and contrast 13 different Adelaides. Uh, I decided to narrow the focus on Europe. Um, so I've got shoes that are made in the UK, made in Italy, made in Spain, made in Portugal, and made in Romania um, from an Austrian company that uh, many of you know so well. So. Uh, without, with that, what we're going to do is we're going to move uh, in, in a quality um, fashion instead of just a regional. And we're going to start with the, um, the most affordable option first. And that is going to be, um, and this is kind of close, um, but I'm going to, uh, going to say that the first one is going to be the Loke Evans. Okay? Now, this is an austerity Adelaide. Okay, so it doesn't have any broguing on it, uh, but it is an Adelaide because it has the U throat, also has a cap tail, also has heel counters. Okay, and um, this is a, uh, a dark brown version, okay, um, kind of a mid brown compared to some dark browns. Um, and uh, what I like about this shoe is that it has a level of formality that's higher um, than a, uh, a number of others. Uh, what I don't like about it is that if you look at the last, that is a very round toe. And in my mind, I think the Adelaide itself um, has a lot more to offer in a chisel toe variety. And so, um, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave this one here and um, talk about it uh, a little bit uh, later, but uh, it is good you're welted. Um, it has a, um, a visible uh, stitch line on the bottom, so it's an open channel. Uh, it has a combination heel with leather and rubber. Um, this is the second to highest uh, tier of, uh, of Loke shoes. This is a Loke 1880 Legacy. Um, and, uh, you know, it has a lot of things that are traditionally Loke, right? It has um, the, uh, the eyelets that are very, very close together um, and, and doesn't have a, uh, a, a, um, a measured change in the eyelids. So uh, like a lot of shoes will have uh, a change in the way they are. So if you have a V-gap, it looks even, but if you don't, then it has this nice kind of like silhouette, almost like a swan's neck silhouette um, going up, which, which I like. I think that that adds a lot of elegance to the shoe. Um, this is just kind of plain. So uh, in terms of my collection, I'm gonna say that this is one of my most utilitarian shoes, but I do like it. It's the only austerity version that I have. And uh, so it has, a, it has a great place in my collection, okay? Now with that, I'm gonna move over to Portugal. Um, and um, this is not an entry level shoe for the brand, but it is um, the only Adelaide I have from the brand. And this is a Carlos Santos. This is the hand grade variety. Um, this has a beautiful wine shadow patina on it, which I think uh, really 
catches the light just gorgeously. Um, the soul is a, a blind stitch soul. Um, so you have no visible channel there. You have a slight bevel in the waist. Um, you have a really nice split combination heel um, where the loke had this kind of funky shape here. This has your more traditional angle shape. Um, and you can see also what's interesting is where it's wearing, right? It wears at the front here, like you would expect. And then I have a little piece that's wearing there where I wear the sole, right? So, uh, or where I wear the heel, okay? And so now I would expect that I will wear down the heel before I wear down the leather and that the leather itself will um, do, uh, do something uh, uh, to prevent uh, fast wear on the, on the rubber. So uh, what I like about the patina service at Carlos Santos is that you have a lot of options um, you can really do a lot of um, really cool things with it. What I like about this shoe is this shoe at this price point has a lot of similarities with shoes of much greater price points. Like this one from Gaziano and Gerling. The shape of the shoe is immensely similar. Now it's not uh, asynchronous or yeah, asynchronous. This one has your asymmetric view, where this one does not, all right? Nor would you expect it to at this price point, right? That, that's a pretty big difference. Now, if we look at some other shoes like this, here it is with the Alfred Sargent. The Alfred Sargent has a much larger rise on the toe, a much bigger shape to it. So again, this is much more similar in look and feel to the Gaziano and Gerling. Now this, is the Crockett and Jones, and this is kind of like halfway in between, right? It has the sharp edge, but it also has a fine edge, a little bit different in between. So, um, and of course, they're all kind of similar in color as well, which uh, for, for my purposes, I really like. So um, the shoe has uh, rounded um, heels, um, heel counters, um, where some of the others have uh, pointies, like the uh, Gaziano has the, the peak, so does the Sargent. Uh, the Crockett and Jones, however, is straight, just like these. So uh, really a uh, fine example and um, you know a fun shoe and a nice one to, uh, to, to look at. Now, from there, we're going to go to another uh, brand, which is also, this is probably one of my favorites in my collection. Um, and this has the, the chisel here. It has the high rises here. So when you compare it in overall shape to the Carlos Santos I just showed you, um, it is very, very similar. Um, but if you look at the, uh, the rise there, it's just a little bit higher on this, which is a TLB Mallorca. Now, what's interesting about this is it has a very, very similar sole. Um, they don't paint it the same. But it doesn't have the patina service. And if you look at the um, TLB, the sole is much narrower and has a much more of a bevel on it, even though the bevel on the Carlos Santos is quite there. Okay? But this is much narrower in waist. Um, the heel shape is the same, but the heel is considerably smaller. So again, um, T TLB, and I've done a lot of comparison videos on TLB and, and this shoe in particular. Um, one of my favorites, it's an absolute classic shoe. Um, love the way it comes together. Um, this is the epitome of what I consider to be the mid-range of high quality. Um, it just it it's the low range on the price spectrum, but it uh, it has everything that you would see on the high quality spectrum. The difference really is the uh, um, just the leather, right? So um, and the leather on this is quite nice. Um, it's just and uh, it it is not uh, really asynchronous or a uh, symmetric either. Uh, has a little bit of asymmetric asymmetry, but not not tremendous, and and that's going to be a big difference when you get into the, you know, you know the the Gaziano and Girling, okay, where the shape is again very similar, okay, you know the obviously there's a lot more care on this. Just look at the heel stack difference, right? There's a lot more heel stacks in the Gaziano and Girling than there are in the TLB. They're both thin heel stacks. They're both leather heel stacks, but that is a significant difference. So then we move to the Carmina. Now Carmina, um, very well-established brand. This is a custom shoe that I did. So it's got multiple types of leather. 
Um, but if we ignore that, this is on the Simpson last, um, it is an absolutely gorgeous shoe. Now this has a more of a round shape to it. So if we go back to the, the, the loke that we started with, this is more round, but this has more of a, a narrowing at the toe um, and uh, has a little bit more shape to it. Now, one of the things I love about this is that that medallion and medallions are not common among my um, uh, among my Adelaides. As you see, this is the first one to show that has a medallion. Uh, but this medallion is very unique. This is one that I chose. It looks like a couple guitars um, and uh, just a really cool shape to add to the shoe. Now, the fact that I mixed the leathers on it uh, really makes it among, among my favorites. Um, love the way it works. The peaks on the heel caps uh, really work for this shoe. The sole work um, is uh, absolutely beautiful. Now it doesn't have um, it doesn't have a beveled waist, and it's not extremely narrow. So if you compare it, okay, to TLB, and everybody always compares TLB and Carmina, um, you know the shape is quite similar. Uh, the uh, symmetry is the same. When you look at the shoe side by side, um, you know the last is clearly different. Um, the, the sharpness of the rise is different. And the sharpness of the rise there is actually quite similar. Um, when you look at the um, fudging, there's more fudging on the Carmina, or excuse me, on the TLB than there is on the Carmina. Um, just again, quite, quite nice. If you look at the heel shapes, there's a lot of similarities. Obviously on the Carmina, there's a thicker piece of rubber and less leather heel stacks in the shape, but both shaped very nicely. And, uh, you know, overall quite similar. So, um, so TLB and uh, Carmina, of course, are both in Spain. Um, and that brings us over from a value position um, back over to the UK and, um, that is going to bring us, actually, I take that back. Uh, we're going to go over to Italy and we're going to look at this shoe. This is the Barbanera um, Spirelli. Uh, this is made out of kudu. So if you look at this, you can see this beautiful natural texture in this. Um, and this is kind of like an olive. It's a waxy kudu, so it has a, a more rustic fee feel. Not suede, but not... Uh, not like smooth leather either. Um, kudu itself uh, can be can be uh, used in a lot of different ways. Um, I look at this as really a rough and tumble kind of shoe, but it is definitely hand grade. Uh, the sole work on this is uh, quite nice, um, and they uh, they do a really nice job in the finishing. You know, high quality, um, which is uh, which is very nice as well. Now um, now we'll get over to um, to the UK, and when we look in pounds. Uh, the next on the price scale would be these, which is the Loke Trinity. This is part of the Loke export grade. Uh, now this is going to have your um, back to an open channel. So if, if closed channel or blind stitch is really important to you, then this wouldn't be a value shoe for you because this is a very expensive shoe, uh, but it has the, um, uh, the open channel. Uh, now as, uh, as soles go and as sole wear and as shoe and as, as high quality leather goes, uh, it is very good. This is the top of the line for Loke, um, and they've done a nice job with it. Um, from a, a sale perspective, um, you can get these on sales for really, really good price. Um, I heard about this shoe on sale um, right before Black Friday for around 250 euros. So it's a, um, you know, depending on where you are in Europe, you can, you can do very well on this where, you know, these other shoes don't really go on sale that often. Uh, there's not a lot of stock in the marketplace. So that, that is a, a, an alternative that you need to think about. So um, it, is a, it is a good shoe um, and uh, very high quality. It meets my comfort test of being able to wear it for 20 hours a day um, and certainly something that, uh, that I, I enjoy. Now, um, the next three shoes that we're gonna look at are you know, within a couple pounds um, uh, in, in price. Um, we're gonna start with the Trickers Belgrave. Um, this is a uh, beautiful Adelaide from a company best known for country shoes, uh, but this is a um, really high quality um, 
uh, Adelaide that comes out of that same company. I, I, I picked this color because this is a color that the company is known for, but they're mostly known um, for like your big bulky wingtip kind of things, so, uh, derbies, wingtip derbies. Um, uh, it's got a really beautiful closed channel or excuse me, blind stitch sole. Um, not narrow. This is like a big shoe, right? I mean, so as you as you think about it, it uh, it is cut a little big from a size perspective. But even so, even without considering the size, it's just not it's not as refined as some of these others. So here, if I look at this compared to this one, which is an Alfred Sargent, right? The um, the overall look and feel of the Alfred Sargent, in my opinion, is just a little more refined. Okay. Uh, and it's the last shape. Now this has um, a beautiful cap toe, um, but it is a little bit more round and it has these beautiful rises on the side, um, but the shape definition is just a little bit different, almost squarer in the way the cap reveals itself um, at this view. Now, obviously, this is a view that's relatively unique to us watching in a video like this. When you're looking at it this way, it's pretty darn similar. Right? Finishing, um, this is not a, uh, they do have some fudging on it, but it is relatively on the edge. Um, there uh, is no fudging on the Alfred Sargent. Okay? The Alfred Sargent is next. Now, Alfred Sargent uh, makes pretty good shoes. Uh, this is part of their exclusive line. They do have a hand grade line as well, which is above it and generally considered to be uh, among the best shoes coming out of the UK. Um, now, not the best, right? But but definitely among. Um, they would rate the... Uh, I actually had this question come up on a number of groups this week where Alfred Sargent fit compared to Crockett and Jones. The consensus um, was that Alfred Sargent and um, Crockett and Jones mainline were relatively comparable, although some people would say that the Crockett and Jones mainline is, is a step below, uh, but uh, the Alfred Sargent hand grade was above Crockett and Jones hand grade. Now, I don't know that I completely um, agree with that. We're going to get into these two in a future shoe battle, um, just taking them on head to head, but this is the Crockett and Jones. Um, this is the Alfred Sargent in this hand, and you can see the um, they are quite similar. There is a little bit more of a flare to the right on the Crockett and Jones. There's also, um, they're also both symmetrical. There isn't anything um, asymmetrical going on there. Um, they are, uh, they both check the boxes. I would say that the, the Alfred Sargent has a little bit more of a narrowness at the top of the use road. Um, you look at the heel, and these could have been made in the same factory. They're so close, right? Um, and uh, just uh, overall look looks uh, looks pretty good. Now, what's interesting about these is that when you look at them compared to the next one, which is a George Cleverly Adam, um, you know this has uh, no fudging on it. But for the most part, this is a very well finished shoe, right? Um, the sole um, work that's done on the edge here is really good. The sole is to die for. And, um, you know, the rest of it is going to look very comparable to both of these. Now, what I have heard, and again, it's through the grapevine, so I don't really know if it's true, but that the George Cleverleys with this sole um, are actually made by um, Alfred Sargent. And the ones with the brown sole without the fiddle back are made by Crockett and Jones as part of their hand grade. Okay, so it's an interesting uh, concept. Uh, you know, the, there there is actually people who've told me that the George Cleverly is on the um, hand grade last from Crockett and Jones. Excuse me. Uh, obviously, not the uh, the ones that are made by Alfred Sargent. So if you look at some telltale signs, you know that is quite similar. Um, this last is obviously different, right? The cutting, the clicking, the, the height of that peak is almost identical. That could have been like cut from the same like exact piece or the same exact die, right? Um, and, and, you know, I want to point out, right? When you're looking at that type of thing, 
you can see uh, you know, differences in different shoes on how the peaks are cut, right? So that's a, that's a, that's a common change as you're looking at them, right? So I'm thinking that the fact that these are so close and the fact that I've heard that this sole means Alfred Sargent. Um, and if you look at the, the shape of the sole, it is remarkably identical. Um, uh, and the heels, the shape is, is also remarkably identical. Um, the nailing on them is also identical, which is one nail, right? Uh, now this, uh, the George Cleverly has a fiddle back where this has more of a beveled waist on the Alfred Sargent. And of course the Alfred Sargent does not have the nail work that the Cleverly does. So that's another, another difference there. So, you know, who knows? Um, at the end of the day, it doesn't really matter, but uh, it is interesting for me to try to pick this stuff apart. Um, so I would, I would equate the George Cleverly more along the Alfred Sargent hand grade. And um, again, just a very exciting shoe um, and uh, well done um, indeed. Now, um, so there are two shoes or three shoes left. Um, there's this one, which I haven't shown. Now this is an Enzo Bonifay. Uh, it is a um, beautiful um, Adelaide made in Italy, um, Naples, I think. Um, no, this is in Bologna, sorry. Um, it actually says on the tree, I should have actually looked at that. Um, and uh, just a, a, a beautiful example of a factory patina where they took their time and made this beautiful. They did a lot of things. This is Sienna Hatch Grain, right, which is a beautiful leather, hard to get. Um, the uh, fudging on here is just second to none. I mean, you cannot even see the hand stitches, it is so well hidden in that fudging. Just something else, right? They did a really nice job with this and they, they uh, um, if you look at the, the shape of it, it's got a very narrow uh, top of the throat, very wide down at the bottom of the U. Um, and really, I think for, for the texture on the shoe, this patina, and I darkened it a little bit using just polish, uh, but I really think that that adds a little to it and uh, just really pops. So like the way that that, uh, that one came out. Now, now this is the Gaziano and Girling St. James II. Um, and, uh, you know, the pride of English shoemaking, right? Um, uh, very, very close, I would say, in, uh, in concept to uh, what they do at Edward Green uh, from a quality perspective, but with much, in my opinion, okay, and this is just my opinion, don't shoot me, uh, but a little bit more of a, uh, a blend of design instead of your traditional English design. Um, I think that this is going to be more of a mix of Italian design and English design. Um, very unique, not copying anything, right? So, um, I, which, which I really love. Um, I really like the way that these shoes came out and um, I really like everything about this company. So just, uh, just a beautiful um, you know, beautiful shoe, beautiful um, experience in buying it. But speaking of experience, you know, I would be remiss if I didn't bring this one out as part of this uh, shoe battle. Um, this is a St. Crispin's. Uh, this is the uh, model 633. And um, this is an Adelaide, but you can see this is a very different kind of Adelaide in the way that it's stitched. It's got a peak on the cap. Um, it's got solid, you know, these kind of rope stitches. So, I mean, it kind of, if you look at it, this is a whole cut shoe that they put this, they used hand stitching to make this into a cap toe Adelaide with heel caps, okay? And that is fantastic. Now it also has this beautiful Norvegian stitching here, okay? Which is 180 degrees, which is always kind of unique, right? Why 180? Well, because when you look at the waist, this is not a fiddleback waist, but that is a pegged waist. That's pretty cool. Look at the nail work and the heel. Again, just absolutely next level. And um, pro th this is also um, extremely, uh, extremely asymmetrical. Um, probably the first shoe that I had where I truly noticed the asymmetry. Um, and then I realized that I had it on my, on my Gaziano and Girling as well. Um, now this shoe is on a, a modified last for my foot. So um, it does fit better than any other shoe that I own, but uh, you would expect that. 
um, and I paid for that, right? So that's that's a little different. Now I only pay for it once. Um, once they have the last, then it's just the regular cost of the shoe to get new ones made. So, um, and it's not terribly expensive. It's uh, you know a few hundred bucks. So, anywho, um, that is our shoe battle for Adelaide's from Europe. So we have just to review, we have Romania, which is St. Crispin's, headquartered in Austria, um, in uh, Vienna, uh, but. Uh, um, manufactured at their factories in, uh, um, in Romania. Carlos Santos. Okay. Beautiful shoes coming out of Portugal. Just absolutely gorgeous and the way they, uh, they came together. Moving over to Spain. This is TLB Mallorca. Okay. Beautiful shoes coming out of a beautiful company. Okay, world world class and uh, affordable. You know, a little bit higher on the price stratosphere, you have Carmina, uh, very, very good, very close in quality to TLB, if not a little bit better. They definitely are a much more established company. They have more selection. Uh, you go onto their custom tool and you can do anything, including exotics, uh, which, um, you know, the smaller companies don't necessarily get into. Um, so really exciting uh, stuff coming out of there. Um, and uh, just, just absolutely gorgeous. You have Barbanera. I have no idea if they make their own shoes. Um, they only have a few styles available. This is one of them. And uh, the quality um, has been pretty good. Um, just small details like the little X on the, the heel. Uh, just cool stuff. I kind of look at, uh, because of their logo, I think, with the uh, sword going through the B, um, kind of think of them as kind of pirate shoes. And I know that that's ridiculous by all accounts, uh, but I, I do like that. Um, great company out of Italy. Um, check out their website if you haven't before. Just uh, cool stuff. Um, Enzo Bonafé, this is, uh, you know, I'm really excited about these. Um, my, my first hand welted um, Adelaide's before I got the uh, St. Crispin's um, and uh, just a, a beautiful, beautiful shoe. And, uh, you know, extraordinary quality with these. And then we move on to the UK. We have Trickers. Now Trickers is a bespoke maker, but they're also a very large purveyor of ready to wear shoes. And um, these are no different. Uh, perfect, ready to wear, uh, beautiful shoes. I would, if I was buying these again, size down. Um, so even though the website says take your usual size, I would probably size down on these. Um, and uh, just a great, uh, very, very well-made shoe. Um, we have Loke, um, has, uh, um, I have two shoes in the collection here. I have the austerity uh, ones and I have the traditional. So this is the Loke Evans, this is the Loke Trinity. Really well-made shoes. Um, the Trinity is, is definitely a step above. Uh, then we have um, your Alfred Sargent. Alfred Sargent, uh, beautiful shoes, well-established maker. Um, just they do uh, they do great things, and I'm really happy with these. Um, like the way they came out. We have uh, Crockett and Jones, just gorgeous, uh, traditional. These are open channel. Crockett and Jones hand grade is blind stitched, um, and uh, you know I I have to say from a from an from an English shoemaker shoe and from a from an overall wear perspective, the open channel is not that meaningful to me. Um, especially not until you get to the really high end. Uh, I do think that um, one of the things that I love about Carmina and about uh, TLB is that they do the blind stitch at a much lower price point. Um, so it's good that you can get it and you can and learn about it um, and try it out. When we get into the, the much higher end, um, it is uh, an absolutely beautiful thing to have, especially when it's paired with the beautiful fiddleback waist. Um, and, you know, that just, you know, that kind of thing that the, the George Cleverly brings is a, uh, is just a welcome addition. Well, some of my favorite soles. Um, and then, of course, last out of the UK, also with a beautiful fiddleback waist, although not as sharp a fiddleback as you have on the Cleverly, um, is the Gaziano and Gurley. So, hey, that is, uh, that is it for today. Uh, thank you for watching. You all have a uh, great time and thanks for watching.